it's time I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. Okay, sounds good to me. Hey, I didn't get three effort points for... I only got three effort points for one thing, right? But I leveled up two skills to level one. What gives? You are expected in the small salon, sir. Sounds good to me. Do we want to make a quick round just to see if there is anyone loitering around in the hallways beforehand? We can go down here. Yeah, you never know. There could be some coin or some water symbol key or whatever around the couches. Doesn't seem like we can go around to the people's rooms anymore though. Okay, we can't come down here for some reason. Oh, I know why. Maybe it's because it's one less cutscene to animate. <laughs> if they force you to go down one staircase specifically, then they can just make one cutscene. That's actually pretty smart. <laughs> I went around in an entire loop and there is nobody, nothing, nada. So let's go down. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. Yes, and my mother kind of stabbed your sister. Don't send her on my mother's trail. I'm not sure what Go Beyond the Nightmare implies though, do I? Mm. So I can choose to share this information with Emily or not. Do we know if it's gonna be a good thing or not? I don't think so, but if Emily finds out that my mother hurt her sister, that might not be a good thing. Like I said before, I always tend towards these skills that need points because they usually seem better, but in this situation, I'm really not too sure. She can help us figure out what the message means. Yeah, uh, okay, you know what? Let's just talk about the messages. They kept up a secret correspondence, which makes me think they were suspicious of someone. And did you find out who it was? No, but Von Volner is mentioned. They were planning to make a quick getaway and were looking to hide something beforehand. Have you got these messages? Mm. Let's just show her. Yes, go ahead, take a look. I see. I must say, uh, thanks for your honesty, Louis. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. That's what I'm worried about too. Because as my mother's son, no matter what my mother did, don't I sort of have an obligation to be on her side? And Emily, she also has an obligation to be on Emma's side. Well, we had a good thing going on at the end of episode one. Can we continue it? <sighs> my mother might not be a good person, okay? I can live with that. Actually, we know my mother's not a good person, judging by what happened to Elizabeth. Emily, there's something else. Go on then. Honest. It's, it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Ah. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. You knew all this. You knew. And yet you didn't kill me, so I guess thank you for that. <laughs> Who's yelling in the back? Why would she do that? I don't know, Louis. But I'll find out. You can count on that. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. 
But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Yes. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. No, we know who it is. It's Manuel Godoy. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a fuss? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The oh. King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if... Gracious. Hmm. Whoa, look at friends, him. Let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. Is that true? You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Weren't you guys all against France anyway? This one's free. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. I'm still trying to look for my mom, but that's not the main purpose of this meeting here. So everyone's got their own thing to do, and I'm just left by myself here. Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you asked. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? What do you care? Oh, that's a vulnerability. We can get one effort point back, but that's so expensive. Have I found her? <laughs> I'm not telling you anything. To hear you speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. 
Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Arrangement? Mm, none of these are immunities, so I think it's okay, even if I use it, right? This one doesn't cost anything. I feel like I'm always, like, tending towards choices that don't cost me anything. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag now. More or less, but please do, do refresh my memory. Yes, of course. Uh, nothing of great importance in itself. During one of our discussions, she spoke of an old book oh. which might have been of interest to me, and she had agreed to let me have it. A book about what? Ancient occultism. You're the buyer! As you are aware, I am a doctor of theology. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? Again, doesn't cost anything. That doesn't... He looks obsessed? <laughs> what kind of a thing to say is that? The least one can say is that he doesn't beat around the bush. Sarah never travels without a few books. What does the one you're looking for look like exactly? It resembles a grimoire. It's divided into seven parts, each one individually locked. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. It's a unique copy. There's only one. The mere mention of it makes his face light up. Well, I'll take a closer look, but I can't promise you anything. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert mm. in Paris. Do you know him? Absolutely not. No. I've never heard of him. I'm sorry. I haven't been much help to you. Well, too bad. We don't trust him. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. Oh my god! For centuries, all those who have come into contact what? with the Al Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. I spent three points making Louis say, I don't know who Von Borchardt is, and then he freaking just says it in the next sentence. Are you kidding me? I was just thinking though, it might have not been a good thing that I lied because I didn't lie to Mortimer and Mortimer might talk to him. Which makes me guess, maybe Mortimer is the one who's prying in his business? Lord Mortimer. Oh, you are way off the mark. There's nothing more for us to say. Goodbye. Welp. Well, I guess that's that. Just now with the whole, oh, the King of France is dead. And then everyone was acting all shocked and stuff. Do you see how Napoleon over there? Right over there? He was like, I think he was looking at Von Volner. Chronicles of the Amber Princes. As I recall, Dorkin was my favorite character. And they both looked not surprised while everyone else was like, Oh my god, I can't believe this happened. Amber Crystals. Another Amber Crystal? Amber. You know, at this point, I feel like maybe I shouldn't even care about the amber crystals too much because I have a lot of capacity, but I'm not filling it at all. No. <laughs> I 
Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? Would you have any more information about the conference Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? I mean, I guess. Yeah? Well, yeah. Now the situation in France is pretty unstable. Maybe we're gonna be talking about that. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. That's free. Meaning... This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. His undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. Undeserved? You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. Everybody here is really high ranking. And I guess of all the people, Napoleon, Napoleon kind of sticks out too, right? Because he's not that high ranking. And he's here because of his skills. Basically because of meritocracy, as far as we know. But then other people, that might not be how they got up here. Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want to go back in that room again. Thank you, though. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. When are you all leaving? Right after the conference? I would have thought that because since there's a murder happening right here, wouldn't it normally be like, no, nobody gets to leave until we solve this? I guess no one cares about my mom. That's just how it is. Oh, we should read about Emmanuel Godoy. Emmanuel Godoy, Secretary of State and Head of the Spanish Government. A favorite of King Charles IV of Spain. Godoy rapidly climbed the political ranks. Lover of Queen Marie Louise Bourbon of Parma. He attracted the envy of Spanish princes. See? This guy didn't get up here because of his skills. Well, maybe he's pretty good too, but it's not the reason, the primary reason why he's here. A secretary of state, he developed and strengthened the Spanish colonial empire. Yeah, he does do stuff, especially in the Americas. A close friend of Louis the 16th says, King of France, he worked hard for the king's liberation, but in vain. This served to fuel his resentment of the Republican government of France. Invited by Sir Gregory home, Godoy arrived at Lord Mortimer's manor with the firm intention of calming the expansionist desires of United States of America on their continent. Okay, so this guy is Spanish, he is from Spain, and he was working with the current, yeah, the current French government, whose king was just beheaded. Both Jacques Peru and Napoleon are four the king being beheaded, it seems. And Volner as well, huh? Volner. Everyone else was like, Oh my god, I can't believe the king is dead! But I wonder if anyone's acting here, because from the letters we saw, it did seem like people were scheming against France a lot. I don't know. Do you have anything for me this episode? What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? 
No, they've all been used. Can we use them again? <laughs> I can't. God damn it. You're useless. Worthless servant. There's Washington. I'm guessing the things that we've seen before don't really respawn. I feel like that's gonna be a huge problem once we run out of new places to look at in the manor. Because how the hell else am I gonna come across royal jelly again? The paintings? What was that? Crucifixion of St. Peter. He was crucified upside down, out of humility. Surprising for an entrance hall. Why upside down out of humility? Is that more... more humble? Oh, okay. Well... Yeah, like look at how many spots we have for effort points, but how often we've actually gotten anything more than even half of the meter. I feel like I'm being a little bit distracted from the story, from the actual content of the game, by the, the effort points. Because I'm constantly trying really hard to juggle everything we got here. And we're always, like, really broke in terms of royal jellies, so... Go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I am very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. Oh, what's going on in Spain right now? <laughs> I guess we should ask. What do you mean? The situation is ready to explode with France over Catalonia. Well, the Duke must have a darn good reason to be absent and come here, mustn't he? When Lord Mortimer invites you, Louis, you come. It's always in your best interest. I wouldn't say that personally, but... <laughs> yeah, when you get invited by him... and If you're me, you only get invited because your mom might be dead. Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving, but you'll see, everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Everyone seems to have an amazing amount of trust in Mortimer. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. That's what I've been trying to do, Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, people coming here without even knowing why. That's, that's a crazy amount of influence that Mortimer supposedly has. I sort of think that probably figures like this did appear throughout history, though. Maybe not known to the public, but there's got to be secret meetings like that all over the place, right? Or maybe that's just my wishful thinking. <laughs> Conspiracies and all. Yeah, this is the butterfly room with the, the swine and the Cersei. The lady in the... Oh, hey, Piaggi. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. <laughs> the king made things worse all by himself. This one's free. Mm, I think it's always good to use one. Use a skill if it's free, because we can find vulnerabilities or immunities. 
Even though I would normally not want to say the king made things worse by himself. <laughs> Your Eminence, I'm sorry for King Louis, but he did ah. everything to put himself there. Louis, how can you say such a thing? Even if France rejects the church, you don't go and behead a person of high status. They always serve our cause better alive than dead. Politically, it's absurd. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I... well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Oh. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. We should somehow read it. Hey, we have the subterfuge skill now, so we should read it before giving it back to him, huh? <laughs> um, we are... We faced an immunity. What is that again? Tiredness or something? But like, I don't think it even matters because like, we have so many golden elixirs and whatever. It's just not all that important. I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. Okay, yeah, that's consistent with everything we've heard so far. I was wondering what to think what of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the church. You can believe me. Is there a bug here? Can I... Do I want to restart this? Thank you for everything. Oh. Minutes. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be safe. <laughs> well, uh, this is about Manuel Godoy's... <laughs> I, uh... Do I want to try asking anyway? He's rumors about his reputation. It used my points, but it didn't give me any information, so that's wonderful. <laughs> now you wanted to speak to me. Can I do it again? No, it just went away. So, <laughs> it ate my point. Well, that's awesome. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, I mean, if it were a place or an object found on this island, what would you think of first? Hmm. The nightmare. No, I don't see oh. anything. I'm sorry. Well, that's too bad. Ah, wait. I suppose it might be that horrible painting hanging in Lord Mortimer's study. Pretend not to be that interested. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> don't worry about it. I was I was just curious. Okay, that's actually a hilarious piece of monologue. Piaggi seems to know everything around here, huh? Where all eyes size you up, where the nightmare is. Mortimer's study. Okay, thank you for the information. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis. Yeah, thank you for taking my effort points and not giving me any information in return. Thanks for that. <laughs> Mortimer's study... Is that... Um... We haven't been to this place yet. Oh, earlier! I didn't check if that was open now. I guess we can try to go this way and see. Yeah, since we're here anyway. This episode, like that bug thing, uh, I feel like the polish overall is a little bit low. I mean, not that even episode 1 was that polished to begin with. But yeah, little bugs like that. I'm already really low on effort points, okay? So please don't eat up random points from me. <laughs> please, I'm begging you. We got the golden elixir back right away, right after we used it. 
If we see stuff that we have to reach, maybe we don't want to reach for it. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly yeah. forbade me from reading it. I'm just feeling really, really insecure over how few ever points and karma like waters I have. Is it supposed to feel like this? Maybe because I'm like, I don't know, pick locking too many things? God damn it, who knows? Anybody here? I guess not. It's very quiet. Where the heck do all the guests go? Seriously. Oh, I'm pretty sure last time I came here. Um, wasn't there something that I couldn't pick up because I had too much of it? Oh, but I don't suppose it's going to give it back to me. I don't think so. And we can't move the statues anymore. Man! Man, they're eating up all my resources and not giving it to me. Was it that box? It was one of these things. I'm so stressed out. Again. Golden elixirs. Stop giving me that, okay? Give me points. Points, goddammit. Oh, hey, that's new. We can go there now. But let me just have a look around here first. Coin? A fragment of amber. That's actually pretty useless nowadays because I don't need any more capacity. No. Well, it's pretty quiet here. Guess that's that. Okay, we've never been there before. What is that? Mortimer's study? I've seen all these. Oh. It's a very modest painting here. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Oh my god! Difficulty 7! And it needs two keys. <laughs> okay. I need one more key to open that. No. If it's something that we need two keys to open, that seems to imply to me that it's got to be a place, like this place, has got to be a place that we can come back to later. Unless if we already missed the other key. But maybe we haven't seen it yet. There's really no way to tell. That's, that's lovely. The locksmith's art. Simply one of the best books on the subject. <laughs> it's pretty vague. Okay. Mm, no, like, okay, if we're coming back here for that box, we might come back for this box. And, and it needs subterfuge, right? So, if I wait a little bit, what's my subterfuge right now? If I can put four points into, or five points into this next time, do I have any books for this? Subterfuge. Yes, I have one book, so I can put one book, manuscript into that, and then four points into that. And if we can get level two, and then come back here, that would be ideal, because then lockpicking would be free, completely. Oh, this goes upstairs. Nobody's here. Thank you, thank you. Coins. Way too many golden elixirs. Probably we can go outside eventually, but not now. Oh. Oh, so that's the conference room, right? Right here. Mortimer said something about listening for the bell ringing. But we can't go in yet. No. It's painful. It's really painful, but I think this time I'm gonna hold off on the two boxes because... I can't keep using my points on all this stuff. Especially because 90% of the boxes I open give me the stuff that I use to open the box back with. Let's... Calm down and wait a little bit, okay? Ah, okay, now we're back up on the floor with 
people. Yeah, this is the room with our floor. Or this is the floor with our rooms. I really wish Jacques Peru would let me go back in so I can pick up the freaking Carmelite water. God damn it. He kicked me out. Oh. What do you want, Louis? We already asked her about the nightmare. I have a question that might seem a bit strange, but... Go on. If I said, go beyond the nightmare, would that mean anything to you? Mm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? Well, I guess now we know it's literally. It can be a place. I don't know where, but it, it's a lead, I think. You ought to ask his eminence. He knows the house and its estate very well, being a frequent visitor. I believe he's in the Grand Salon. Thank you for your advice. You know, I don't know why we don't just ask Mortimer this. <laughs> he's the one who owns the house, goddammit. But he seems to be a busy guy, so I guess that's why. What do you think of our last guest? Well, I never thought I would get the chance to meet that Hispanic Casanova in the flesh. His reputation is well known. The gentleman collects lovers, including, would you believe it, the Queen of Spain. I tried to ask Piaggi about this earlier. Politics. Dang it. I am interested though. Ah! Oh, okay, okay. The Queen of Spain likes to indiscreetly say, the King, Godoy, and myself make up the Holy Trinity. The people have appropriately renamed them the goat, the ruffian, and the whore. <laughs> I didn't see you being a mudslinger in your idle hours, I must say. Does that impress you? <laughs> Emily, what can you tell me about the coming conference? Sir Gregory and Lord Mortimer organize this kind of high society meeting every so often in order to consider the world situation. But to what purpose? Well, by bringing together the most influential people from the dominant nations of the modern world, they allow the mighty to discuss matters with calm clarity. There are precedents of armistices being signed at the end of these talks, you know. Talking while holding a glass of brandy makes things easier. You'll see. Yeah, because then you get all cloudy and you can't think properly anymore. <laughs> You're leaving me? Unfortunately, I have things to do. Thank you again, madam. If you would like to spawn later on, maybe you can come over to my room again. I mean, we don't have an Elizabeth to get in our way today, so I'm just, I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, Mortimer's study, that's probably the place that we saw before. So I'm just gonna really quickly, oh, walk around here and see if there's anyone else around here. Emily's room. Hey, why the hell could we not look at Piaggi's room? Seriously. Sir Gregory Holm, if we get to investigate people's rooms, I think we should get to investigate everybody's room. But instead, they were kind of selective with it. Guess they can't give everything away. Why can't we go into our own room though? This one really is a mystery, because I'm pretty sure inside my own room, there's... There's points and stuff. <laughs> Even though I wanted to find out about the rumor about Godoy just now, from Emily, that point was kind of useless. <laughs> I really gotta learn to like hold back a little bit. Okay, well it doesn't really seem like there's much else here. Washington is not here, so obviously we wouldn't be able to get in. Nope. Okay. Can we go visit the crime scene again? Also, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Are there really no jellies in the hallways here? God damn it. Oh. I always think that little spot of light is something, but it's not. I know it's not. Because I've been fooled by it like 20 times now. Okay, we're back here. Right back here. Mortimer? Mortimer? 